Problem two asks us to do a little bit of data wrangling before we do the visualizations. The first question is, what do we do about missing data? If we look at the data table as it exists on GitHub, we can see by scrolling across that a lot of, of the columns have empty spaces in them. Especially if we look at the ethnic groups that are less common, you can see that there are a lot of blank spaces that probably are not actually missing data in the sense that they don't know how many students there are, but rather they're probably values of zero. And for whatever reason, they decided to leave those spaces empty instead of putting zeros in them. So I think the correct thing to do in this situation would be to replace all of those blank cells with zeros. And we could do that by hand, but it would actually be easier to just do it with R. If we look at the actual uh, data frame as it's been read in, we see that all of those blank cells have been replaced with NAs. So what we need to do in our script is to replace the NAs with zeros. So what we need to do is write an expression that will select the cells that need to be replaced with zeros. So I'm going to start by describing the column that we want to operate on, which is school's data frame and then limited English proficiency. And we are going to specify or select the rows that should be affected by putting a Boolean inside the square brackets. And the condition that we want to check for is is.na. And then the question is, what do we want to know whether it's NA or not? And the answer is, school's data limited English proficiency. So we need to basically pass this column into the isNA function. That's going to produce a vector of Booleans, which will then select which of the rows in that column should be affected. And then, based on that selection, what we want to do is to assign each of those values to zero. Let's go ahead and run this line. Now if we go back and look at the school's data frame into the limited English proficiency column, here's a zero right here. Here's another zero. So it has replaced the NAs with zeros. Now that we fixed that problem with our data, we can calculate the fraction of students that have limited English proficiency. By taking the actual number of students with limited English proficiency, which I'm going to copy from here, and then dividing by the total number of students, which we still have the value from before. All right, and here it is, fraction of limited English, and those are our fractions. So now we are ready to create the scatter plot. It's actually quite easy to create the scatter plot. We just simply say plot, and then we need to put in which value we want for x and which we want for y. So if we want fraction limited English proficiency as x, then we put fraction limited English, and then a tilde, and then fraction disadvantaged. Let's go ahead and run that, and here's my scatter plot. In order to generate a linear model so that we can do the trend line, we need to generate a model using the lm function. And again, we're going to pass the same values in for x and y, so I'll just copy those and put them inside the parentheses. 
after we do that, then we just need to say a b line and then pass the model we generated into that function. So we'll run that line and that line. And now we see that a trend line has been overlaid on top of our scatter plot. The last question is to generate some statistical quantities. And that's quite easy. We just need to say summary and then pass our model into that. And down in the console window, we can see the summary. So here's the median, maximum, minimum, and then an assessment of whether the uh, regression is significant or not. And the p-value here is nowhere close to 0.05. So there isn't a significant relationship, which we can see here based on the fact that the trend line isn't pointed upwards very much. When we saw in the earlier plot that plotting the raw numbers is very skewed, that's not a particularly good way to do a regression analysis because a regression analysis assumes that the data are normally distributed. And we didn't test that, but we can certainly see that doing a transformation into fraction makes them be much more normally distributed. Without doing a strict test of the assumptions of regression, we can't know how valid the analysis itself is. However, when you do a regression, typically we have a thought that y is somehow caused by x. And in this case, it doesn't really necessarily follow that having limited English proficiency should be caused in any way by being disadvantaged. In fact, one could imagine it could be the other way around, that having limited English proficiency might cause you to be economically disadvantaged. Or there could be a third factor that affects both of them. So without doing a randomly controlled experiment of some sort, we really should probably be looking for a correlation rather than doing a linear regression. But as an exercise, this is a good type of data to try making some plots.